14th lecture on the book of Revelation. The main text is Revelation chapter 17. The title is The Prostitute. First, Infatuation of the Prostitute, verses 1 through 6. Second, The Beast with Seven Heads and Ten Horns, verses 7 through 14. Third, Destruction of the Prostitute, verses 15 through 16. Read 17, verse 1. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. The waters is mentioned in verse 15. Verse 15 says, The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. Therefore, the waters is the peoples and multitudes of the world. What is the prostitute here? The prostitute is the humanistic world and all that is in it. Verse 18 says, The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. The great city refers to Babylon. It refers to humanism. 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 and 16. James chapter 4 verse 4. Matthew chapter 16 verse 4. The prostitute continuously infatuates believers. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24. This world finds delight in sin. Believers must not pair up with the world. We must not be made dirty by the world. And we must sing the new song on Mount Zion. Chapter 14 verses 3 and 4. Believers have glorious joy. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. Therefore, the prostitute is the humanistic culture of everything that belongs to this world. It refers to all the wrong cultures, wrong materials, civilizations, and thoughts. Read verse 2. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery. And the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Many people were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. The people in the world were drunk with humanism and secularism. They were intoxicated by the sweet things the world offered them. The kings and men with worldly authority were intoxicated. Thus, they were slaves to materialism. The kings on earth and arrogant men fell to secularism. The citizens also fell to hedonism. People loved pleasure more than God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 In this way, the prostitute brought people to love pleasure and intoxicated them, bringing them to destruction. Verse 3 
Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The Apostle John went to a desert through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Here, the desert is the complete opposite of a secular location. It is a place of refuge. Chapter 12, verse 6. When the Apostle John went to the desert, he was able to see the identity of the prostitute. In this way, when we live in faith by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we can then clearly see the identity of the prostitute. Then we can escape from her intoxication. It says John saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. The color scarlet symbolizes vitality, anger, and violence. This is the color of the devil. The nation of the beast refers to the nations of the world. It symbolizes the nations in the world. The nations in the world are where the devil dwells. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 The nations of the world receive the devil's power and then lash out in anger and violence. They have names that blaspheme the name of God. Their names overstep boundaries. They call themselves the Father. The head of the Catholic Church is the Pope. Pope means Father. He who calls himself Father is wrong. There are those who are presumptuous and say, I am the Son. Our true Father is the one and only God the Father. There are seven heads and seven horns. This means that there are many leaders in the world. There are many leaders in society and in nations throughout the world. There are positions with authority. There are leaders in politics, economics, art, sports, and education. There is worldly authority in worldly humanism. Such worldly authority and powers in the world seduce us. Verse 4. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The prostitute was dressed in clothing. She was dressed in purple and scarlet clothing. This is fancy and extravagant clothing. Luke chapter 16 verse 9. She adorned herself with gold, precious stones, and pearls. This is to decorate one's body with expensive and valuable accessories. The physical appearance is fashionable. The exuberant night lights in the world bring us pleasure. The neon signs 
that shine bright at night in bars and nightclubs entice people. It says that the woman held a golden cup in her hand. She was beautifully adorned on the outside. However, her cup was filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. In the cup were humanistic thoughts. In her world were the thoughts of atheism. In it were abominable things. There are inappropriate music, inappropriate movies, inappropriate books, and inappropriate art. Today, there is the New Age Movement. The New Age Movement seduces people with fallacious music and movies. The movement is full of deceit. This is the New Age Movement. They believe in evolution, support human cloning, encourage abortion, encourage homosexuality, and encourage Satan worship. Through this movement, the characters of humans become like that of beasts. Worldly cultures gradually fall as they become filled with sins of societies. They begin to perish. The times are like that of Sodom and Gomorrah and Noah's generation. Luke chapter 17 verses 27 and 28. Verse 5. This title was written on her forehead. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. The woman's name was Mystery. This is the devil's secret. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. This is the secret power of lawlessness. However, we believers can recognize her nature. In the same way, though cultures of the humanistic world may seem beautiful on the outside, its insides are filled with sin. This is Babylon the Great. This is construction by mankind. Genesis chapter 11 verses 3 through 9. It says, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. This means that the woman is the mother of all the sins in the world. This leads people to betray God. Verse 6, I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. The humanistic world persecutes believers. They are martyred. In this way, the world attempts to drown us in its ways and kill us. We must only look towards the Lord and only follow the Lord. We must put God first above everything else. We must use the world for the Lord and for the Lord's will. James chapter 4 verse 4 Verse 7 Then the angel said to me, 
Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The angel said that he would teach John about the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. This means that the angel would teach John the secret of the beast. 1 John chapter 5 verse 19 Verse 8 The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and will come up out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The beast here symbolizes the nation of the Antichrist. It refers to the nation that stands against Christianity. The nation previously existed. The nation of the Antichrist consistently persecuted Christians. Then the nation of the Antichrist was destroyed. It does not exist now, but it will come in the future. The nation of the Antichrist will come and stand against the church, and then it will be destroyed. When the nation of the Antichrist comes, we will receive great persecution. Verse 9 This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. The seven hills refer to great and strong groups. The prostitute controls the groups of the world. It also says this calls for a mind with wisdom. This refers to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 13 and 14. Verse 10, there are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for a little while. It says that five have fallen. This is the historical reference to Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, the Medes and Persians, and Greece. The five nations of Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, the Medes and Persians, and Greece were destroyed. It says that there is one. Historically, this refers to Rome. However, Rome will eventually be destroyed. It also says, the other has not yet come. This refers to the future coming of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will use its powers only for a short while. It will receive God's judgment and fall. The nation of the Antichrist will come and be destroyed, and then come again and be destroyed. God judges the nations of the world. History will be changed according to the will of God. Verse 11 The beast who once was and now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. This is the vicious nation 
of the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 7, verses 20 through 26. In the beginning, there were ten kings. Then another king appeared. Then three kings fell to destruction. There were ten at first. Then one was added, and there were eleven. Of the eleven, three fell to destruction. So now there were eight. The eighth king is the most vicious king of them all. Daniel chapter 8, verses 9 through 14. Through this eighth king, believers received great hardships and persecutions. However, in the end, God will judge even the eighth king. Then in the end, God's eternal kingdom will be established. Daniel chapter 7, verses 26 through 27. Verse 12. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. The ten horns were ten kings. There are many with authority. However, these people will temporarily receive authority. Verse 13. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. The seven heads and ten horns will be ideologically united. Those who oppose Christianity will become one. They will give the authority to the beast. Then the nation of the Antichrist will take the authority and persecute Christians. Verse 14. They will make war against the Lamb. But the Lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings. The nation of the Antichrist fights with the church and believers. The Lamb refers to Jesus Christ. The powers of the Antichrist persecute Jesus Christ and the church. Yet, ultimately, Jesus Christ has the final victory. We believers who are with Jesus will gain victory as well. This is because Jesus is the Lord of all creation and the King of kings. Believers who are with the Lord will have victory. First, believers have been called. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2. This means that they have received God's grace. This is to live a life that is submissive to the Lord. We have been called by God, therefore we must obey. Second, Believers have been chosen by God. Chapter 18, verse 4. Second Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. They are like Gideon's 300 men. It means that they fight courageously, for they have been chosen by God. Third, Believers are truthful. Those who are truthful and loyal will have victory. There must be obedience in accordance with the Bible. This means to use the conscience of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. 
when believers go forward truthful as according to the word, then the devil will not be able to affect the believers. Believers must be in truth. Verses 15 through 16. The nations of the world will bring about war and the cultures of the world will come to ruins. The nations of the world will also be in war with one another and be destroyed. Then they will destroy the materials, civilizations, and cultures they had previously built up. They will build up for themselves and then fight against one another. This is God's judgment. Then all the materials, civilizations, and cultures will be destroyed through war. Thus, the nations of the world will bring the prostitute to ruins. Verse 17. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule until God's words are fulfilled. God put into their hearts what was written to accomplish his purpose. God uses the beast to fulfill God's will. Then the beast will fill up its greed until it is finally destroyed. This is ultimate Ultimately, the fulfillment of the will of God. Ultimately, the devil's authority will receive judgment. The power of the beast will receive judgment. The nation of the Antichrist will be destroyed. Yet, believers will be saved through the grace of God. Daniel chapter 8 verses 13 and 14. Verse 18. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. The great city refers to Babylon. Therefore, Babylon and all the fallacious things in it will receive judgment and will be destroyed. We will continue with the lecture on Revelation chapter 18. Title is The Fall of Babylon. First, The Fall of Babylon, verses 1 through 3. Second, Come out of her, my people, verse 4. Third, The Doom of Babylon in One Hour's Time. Verses 5 through 11. Fourth, the de destruction of materials. Verses 12 through 20. Fifth, the outcome of the fall of Babylon. Verses 21 through 24. In chapter 18, Babylon, the humanistic world, 
is destroyed. Chapter 17 is about the destruction of fallacious thoughts and cultures within Babylon. Chapter 18 is about the destruction of the shell of humanism in the world and the physical. Read verses 1 through 2. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great! She has become a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit, a haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. An angel came with authority by God's instruction. The angel said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Babylon refers to the humanistic world. Babylon existed in ancient times. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. Babylon also existed in Daniel chapter 4. God judged Babylon then. There are many types of Babylon even today. There is the political Babylon, the religious Babylon, the scientific Babylon, and etc. They become one and claim they can make the world a better place. They push God aside and attempt to build a world where they could do what pleases them. Even the church says, let's become one global church without any mention of the truth. It is good to become one in truth. However, to become one without truth is business, and it is to become a religious pow tower of Babel. There is also a scientific tower of Babel. This includes evolution, human cloning, which creates a humanistic tower of Babel. Babylon's materialism, civilizations, politics, science, and technology are scattered throughout. It says she has become a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit. This means that Babylon will receive God's judgment and become a desolate and abandoned place. It will also become a hell after God judges the world. Verse 3, For the nations, for all the nations, have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. Babylon committed countless immoral acts. Its secularism led people away from God. 
it made people intoxicated with the things of the world. As a result, the judgment of God's wrath will come. Verse 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. God told his people to come out of the humanistic world. This means that the world will be destroyed in the future. Therefore, our hearts must now leave this world. Our spirits must become new. We must look only to the Lord and depend on Him as we go forward. We must not fall to the sins of the world. We must have faith like that of Noah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 17 and 18 When this world comes to ruins, we must not fall with it. We must not keep our hearts in this world. We must always keep our hearts in the Lord. We must now live apart from the world. Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, <coughs> and Lot was instructed to leave the place. He was told to escape into the mountains. Verse 5 For her sins are piled up to heaven. Babylon's sins were piled up to the heaven. God remembers Babylon's crimes. The Lord remembers all the sins of man. When the sins pile up, God will bring judgment upon man. It is just like Noah's time. Genesis chapter 6 verses 5 through 7. Verse 6. Give back to her as she has given. God's judgment is fair and just. God judges sins. God heavily repays according to one's actions. There will be severe judgment. Here there is a cup. This refers to secularism's extravagant and hedonistic materialism as well as idolatry. It includes idolatry and the sin of treachery against God. Therefore, God will judge the world in one instant. Verse 7 Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. Here we see the sins of Babylon. We see the sins of the prostitute. First, she gave herself glory. This is egotism. We must give God all the glory. Second, she gave herself luxuries. This is materialism. 
third, she claimed that she was a queen and not a widow. This is pride. This is to depend on oneself and not on God. First Kings chapter 14 verse 9. This is to use the things of the world to sin. We must use materials and worldly authority for the Lord. We must not take the things of the world and use it for ourselves. Queen refers to pride. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8. Even if we become king, we must remain humble. We must make God our king. God must be the master of our lives. She also said that she was not a widow. This is to take materials and power as one's husband. This is to take money as one's husband. This means to depend on the world. She further claimed that she will never mourn. This means that all will go well. It is to not fear God's judgment. In verse 9, the kings of the earth were immoral and they left God. They served idols. Verse 8. Therefore, in one day, her plagues will overtake her. The humanistic Babylon fell in one day. It faced sudden destruction. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Daniel chapter 4, verses 20 through 33. When things of the world face destruction, it will happen in one quick instant. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her. The kings of the earth committed adultery. Verse 3. The cultures of the world will receive judgment and be destroyed. Everything in the world will be destroyed. Then the kings of the earth will weep and mourn. They will be destroyed in one instant. This means that destruction will come suddenly. No matter how stable one may be in life, they will face sudden destruction when God brings judgment. Even the strongest powers will face destruction. Even the healthiest will face this.
destruction. Verse 11. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. The merchants of the earth will mourn. When Babylon falls, they will no longer be able to do business. Therefore, they have no choice but to mourn when the world is destroyed. Verse 12. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron wood, and articles of every kind of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble. There are many merchandises here. There are gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls. These are valuable minerals and treasures. Then there are fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth. These are luxurious clothing. Then, there are men, every sort of citron wood, every kind of ivory, and iron and marble. They are articles of furniture. These are used to lure people to luxuries and squandering. However, all this will fall at once, and merchants will mourn. First Timothy, chapter six, verse seventeen. Verse thirteen. Here, there are cinnamon and spice, incense, myrrh, and frankincense. These are various precious spices. They are expensive cosmetics. There are cattle and sheep, horses and carriages. These are livestock. There are also servants. Merchants sold and bought humans. They were involved in human tra trafficking. They considered spices as luxuries, wore expensive clothing, lusted after food, and made materials their idols. They bought and sold humans. They involved themselves in such wickedness. Therefore, God will judge these people in an instant. Verse 14. God will judge and remove all that Babylon longed for. Verse 15, the merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand off, terrified at her torment. The merchants will then be terrified and weep and mourn. They will know no longer be able to take to make 
money when the world is destroyed. We cannot keep our hope in the world. Even when the world is destroyed, we must keep our hope in God. We must not be attached to our riches. First, and cry out, Woe, woe, O great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. The world will ultimately be destroyed. The world will ultimately be destroyed. Even those dressed in fine linen and purple and scarlet will be ruined. People will wear luxurious clothing. However, they will all be ruined in one morning. First, seventeen. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. The world will be destroyed in one hour. Those who travel around the world will be destroyed. The advocates of the world will be destroyed. Sea captains will be destroyed. Those who entertain themselves on ships will be destroyed. And those who earn their living from the sea will be destroyed as well. No matter how stable one may be in this world, they will be ruined within one hour's time. God can destroy everything through wars. That everything can be destroyed through earthquakes or tsunamis. There can also be destruction through nuclear weapons. There can be destruction through natural disasters. Verse 18. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, Was there ever a city like this great city? The world will burn to the ground and be destroyed. Verse 19, they will throw dust on their heads, and with weeping and mourning, cry out, Woe, woe, O great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought to ruin. People may become wealthy on earth, but they will be destroyed in one instant. Verse 20. Rejoice over her, O heaven. Rejoice, saints and apostles and prophets. God has 
judged her for the way she treated you. When the final judgment comes, we believers will rejoice. However, when judgment comes, those who are of the world will lament. They will weep. However, we believers will rejoice. We will walk down a spiritual path. We must keep our faith. We must be joyful even when the world comes to an end. We will face hardships and persecutions while living in this world. God will judge this sinful world. He will take revenge for us. God will save the persecuted believers. All that is in this humanistic world will be destroyed. The nations that stand against against God will also be destroyed. However, the Church of the Lord and the believers will have final victory. Exodus chapter 8 verse 22 chapter 9 verse Chapter 11, verses 5 through 7. Here we will conclude the 14th lecture on the book of Revelation. Thank you.